You're listening to the Egbert, Margaret and Stephen podcast. For more stories, you can go to my website at jettabradley.com. Egbert, Margaret and Stephen and the funny stories. What's so funny? Stephen asked Egbert, who was doubled over laughing. Margaret stopped and stared at him, rolling her eyes. Egbert had been laughing like this since they left school. Stop laughing, Stephen shouted. I promise I'll tell you, said Egbert, but he couldn't. Every time he laughed... The sound of his own laughter made him laugh even more. Margaret and Stephen walked ahead to get away from him. When they got home, Egbert dropped his school bag and then fell on top of it. <laughs> it was so funny. You'll laugh too when I tell you. I don't know, said Margaret. It's not that funny when you're the one watching the person laughing. Well, I'd rather sit in the bath with a book on my head and even have a bottle of shampoo up my bum and be very, very uncomfortable than watch him do this. In fact, I'm going to do it now, said Stephen. You don't like baths, said Margaret. Exactly, said Stephen, storming off. Oh dear, said Margaret. She went back to Egbert and sat down next to him on the kitchen floor. Stephen's gone to sit in the bath with a bottle of shampoo up his bum and a book on his head, she told Egbert. Egbert stopped laughing. Really? Can we go watch him? Margaret was shocked. I'm shocked, she said. You're not really, said Egbert. I really am, said Margaret. I didn't think you'd stop laughing for anything. Tell me what's making you laugh and don't tell Stephen so then we can laugh and he can sit in the bath with a bottle of shampoo up his bum. You're terrible, said Egbert. Yeah, said Margaret. Okay, so this woman. Which woman? interrupted Margaret. The woman in my story, said Egbert. This is a made up story, said Margaret. So? So all this time you've been laughing about a story you made up and not even something that really happened. Egbert stared at her. Since when did something have to be real to be funny? He folded his arms. I'm not telling you now. Come on, please. You're right. Start from the woman, said Margaret. That was the beginning. Right. Okay. A woman goes into a shop to buy some jam and a bee goes up her nose and it tickles her and she starts to laugh. But the bee is lodged there, lodged really hard against the tickle bone and it's stuck so tightly it can't even sting her. The woman is laughing pretty hard by now. But even all her laughing doesn't get rid of the bee. The laughing woman leaves the shop and goes into a bank. She has to get some money out and she says to the clerk at the bank, I need to make a withdrawal. A withdrawal of a bee, said Margaret. Ha ha, said Egbert. Anyway, the clerk won't give her any money because she won't stop laughing long enough to say her name and account number and her secret code. So the woman grabs the clerk by her lapels and pulls her over the counter and says, you better get this bee out of my nose before I strangle you. Is that the funny bit? asked Margaret. No, in the queue behind the bee woman is a little boy called Simon, standing with his mother. I know what to do, says Simon, and he lets go of his mum's hand. He has an ice cream, and he stuffs the ice cream up the woman's nose. What happens then is, the bee falls into the woman's mouth, and she spits it out. The woman stops laughing and looks at Simon and says, ta -oo. She can't speak because the bee on the way out bit her on the tongue and her tongue has swollen up. In fact, it's so swollen she can't hold her tongue in her mouth. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Simon turns to his mum. Mum, give me two dollars. What for? says his mum. Please mum, just trust me on this one, says Simon. So his mum, who is a little bit concerned, gives her son two dollars and he runs out of the bank. Come back, yells his mum, running after him. Simon runs over the road, zigzagging between all the cars who are squealing to avoid hitting him. He runs into the ice cream shop and says, I need another ice cream. That'll be $5 then, young man. But I only have $2 and there's a lady who's about to die from bee shock if I don't give her an ice cream. That's too bad, sonny boy. You didn't bring the lady with you, so I don't know if you're telling the truth. Oh, for heaven's sake, of course he's telling the truth. Can't you tell by now, says mum, slamming another $3 down on the counter. Will that do? That'll do, says the ice cream man. What flavour would you like? I don't know, says Simon, looking through the counter at the 15 flavours. Get vanilla, mum says. Well, I quite like licorice myself, says the ice cream man. But there's also tangerine, which goes quite well with strawberry. But other people like strawberry and cream. Then there's chocolate and chocolate and mint and chocolate and brownies and chocolate and marshmallows. We'll have chocolate and marshmallows, says Simon. As soon as Simon has the ice cream, 
he runs back across the road with his mum calling out behind him, Simon, you should have gotten vanilla. But Simon ignores her. He runs back into the bank where now the woman's tongue is so big, she is doubling over as it falls out of her mouth and stretches down to the floor. Simon hands her the ice cream. Oh, I'm allergic to chocolate, says the woman. Oh no, says Simon. She's allergic to chocolate. I told you to get vanilla, says his mum. Simon picks up the ice cream. Don't worry, mum, it won't go to waste. Then he turns to the woman with the big tongue. Please don't worry, it won't go to waste. It won't go to waste, Egbert bursts out laughing. Do you get it? Yes, but what happens to the woman with the swollen tongue, said Margaret. I don't know, said Egbert. She could die from that swollen tongue. It's just a story, Margaret. I made it up. She doesn't exist, said Egbert. You have to do something about the woman. You can't leave her to die, said Margaret. It's my story. So? So I get to do what I like to the characters. They went into the bathroom and saw Stephen in the bath with a book on his head, but he did not have the shampoo up his bum. If you put that shampoo up your bum, I will never use it, said Margaret. That's too bad, said Stephen, because I did have it up my bum, but I took it out before you came in here. You did not, said Margaret. I did too. Have a smell, said Stephen. Ah, uh, yuck, screamed Margaret, running out of the bathroom. What were you laughing about before, said Stephen. It was the funniest story ever, said Egbert. Can you tell me and not Margaret, said Stephen. Yeah, but don't tell Margaret, said Egbert. I won't, said Stephen. It was all about this man who twisted balloons into animal shapes, but the problem was he was allergic to balloons popping. That's just stupid, said Stephen. He has to make balloons into animals and they pop and he's allergic. He'll swell up. He was a very swollen man, said Egbert. He swelled up so much he looked like a balloon. And some people used to come over and say, can I buy this balloon, sir? And they really meant him. They wanted to buy him. Oh, said Stephen. Well, what happened to him? He went pop, said Egbert. What else, said Stephen? No, that's it. He went pop. He just popped, said Stephen. He just popped, said Egbert. There's nothing left of him today. But, said Stephen, how did he pop? He was so swollen. And then a crow went past and pecked him and he popped. Egbert burst out laughing. That's not funny at all. That's the saddest story I've ever heard, said Stephen. It's so sad you have to laugh, said Egbert. Not really, said Stephen, but don't tell Margaret the story. I won't, said Egbert. When Egbert left the room, Margaret came back in. Egbert told me the story, you know, said Margaret. Egbert told me the story, said Stephen. No, 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 no. He told me the story, but it was so long. It took him ages. I thought I was going to die of boredom listening to that story. Mine was very short, said Stephen. You didn't get the funny story, said Margaret. It was a very, very sad story, said Stephen. Why didn't he tell me the funny story? I don't know. Maybe he decided I was more worth telling funny stories to, said Margaret. With that, Stephen picked up the bottle of shampoo and squirted it all over her hair and her dress. Margaret screamed and ran out. Then there was a knock and Margaret opened the front door and found there was a man there with balloons in his hand. Hello, said Margaret. I'm the balloon man, said the balloon man. Who, said Margaret. I'm looking for Egbert. Egbert? Egbert, there's a man here for you. Egbert came to the front door. Yes, said Egbert. I'm the balloon man, said the balloon man. What? You were just talking about me. I was what, said Egbert. You were just talking about me to your brother in the bath. Egbert looked at the balloon man, very worried. You're not real. I made you up. I'm real now. Once you make something up, it becomes real. And he began to make a little dog out of a balloon. No, 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 said Egbert. If you do that, it'll pop. And then you'll pop. And then there was another knock on the door. There was a woman with a very large tongue sticking out of her head. I look for air, er, said the woman. Be woman, said Margaret. Egbert, you might be in a lot of trouble. Egbert came to the door, and when he saw the woman with the big tongue sticking out of her mouth, he nearly fainted. Yeah, said the woman. This tongue, I, easy. I don't know how to help you, said Egbert. The balloon man began to make a sausage dog. The woman watched him make a sausage dog, and she started to laugh. And as she laughed, her tongue began to get less swollen. Keep going, said Margaret to the balloon man. Her tongue is getting smaller and smaller. I don't know what you're doing, but she loves it. Everybody loves my balloons, said the balloon man. Nobody loves your balloons, said Egbert. I made you up. Nobody's ever seen you make a balloon before. I've had loads of people watch me make balloons. I've been doing it for decades. You said so yourself. Only thing is, said the balloon man, I don't want to go pop. I do not want to die. I can't help that, 
The story is funny because you die, said Egbert. It's not funny to me, said the balloon man. Go back and unpop me. At this point, the bee woman's tongue was back inside her head. What's wrong with the balloon man, said the bee woman. He goes pop very soon, said Margaret. I'd hate to see a good man go pop, said the bee woman. Stephen came out with the book still on his head. You said you made him up, said Stephen. I did make him up, said Egbert. He looks pretty real to me, said Margaret. All right, said Egbert. I'll try again. See, the thing is, you've always loved the sunshine. I have, said the balloon man suddenly. How did you know? Egbert sighed. I created you, remember? Now, to avoid the crows popping you, you order a leather umbrella to protect you outside. It is very heavy to hold up. and Because it's so heavy, you can no longer make balloons. You stop swelling up and you stop selling balloons. Instead, you use your hands to knead bread and make fancy pictures out of the dough. But you are allergic to yeast too, and it makes your hands swell up so bad. Then your face, then your legs, until you are forced to lie under a fan all day. That's ridiculous, said the balloon man. Do you want me to help you in this story or not, said Egbert. Not really, because you're telling a terrible story, said the balloon man. You're going to go pop very soon, and you won't have helped yourself, said Egbert. The balloon man began to hyperventilate. Make something, said Egbert, that'll calm you. So the balloon man made an apple. You're right, it's calming me, said the balloon man. How did you do that, said Egbert? I didn't tell you to make an apple. I've got some free will now that I'm outside of your story. But that's great. If you've got free will, you don't need me to make the rest of the story go better. No, I do, I do, I really do. I don't have enough free will to create an ending. That's the creator's job. All right, said Egbert. Look, the thing is, you're really hot from the swelling, so you wave down a drinks fan and order a whole vat of ice cubes. The drinks man doesn't want to give it to you, but you insist because otherwise you're going to explode, and he sees that and he agrees. He gives you a vat of ice cubes, and you say, perfect, and you stand in the vat, and soon, because you're hot, the cubes melt, and then you begin to melt. You melt and melt until you become the icy water, and the man in the drinks fan just thinks you left. So he pours the cold water back into ice cube trays, puts you back into the freezer and serves you with drinks to the customers. That is really disgusting, said Margaret. Nobody wants to have somebody melt and become water and then have them put into their drink. I think I'd rather pop, said the balloon man. I'm sorry, said Egbert, wringing his hands. I can't do good endings. When I come back from wherever I'm going after I go pop, I am going to make a story up about you and you just watch out. You'll be sorry, said the balloon man. Then Egbert felt very worried. What if such a thing were possible? Please, said the bee woman. I think I'm falling in love with this man and I'd like to live the rest of my life with him. And if you don't change the story, I will make sure every bee I know comes to sting you. Catastrophe, thought Egbert. My life is over. I'll be stung and popped to death. Please, I'll try again, said Egbert. One day, you are making a sausage dog out of a balloon. When a man comes along walking a sausage dog, the sausage dog sees the balloon sausage dog and really likes it and runs up and pounces on it. But his sharp claws make the balloon go pop. That makes you scared. So you jump, you jump so high, so high, you break a little bone in both ears, which makes your allergy to balloons go away. Does it? said the balloon man. Does it? said the bee woman. It does. So although you can no longer hear, you are no longer going to die. The end. Oh, thank you, my boy, shouted the balloon man. A much better ending. Why is he shouting, said Margaret? Because he's deaf, said Egbert. The balloon man took the bee woman's hand and they went away together. And every time balloons popped in the future, the balloon man could not hear them. But he had a funny feeling he'd almost died. And that was the end of that. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed it, share it on social, leave a positive comment on my website or Instagram or email me. I'd love to hear from you. 